everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new Crusader Kings 3 video. This is episode one of the Al Andalus Let's Play Achievement Run series that uh, I did mention in my video about five uh, interesting or fun achievements you can do. I'll try to remember to link that at the top here. And um, obviously part of that achievement is you need to start as an Iberian Muslim, conquer all of Iberia, basically half of France, and then take the um, revenge for the Battle of Tours decision. So we're going to start with that here today. And I want to go through who I've chosen, why I've chosen them, the first few targets and strategies we're going to do, and so on. Uh, if you want to find out more about Iberia in 1066, I will endeavor to link the video at the top. You can check that out as well. <clears throat> so, thank you again for all the likes, comments, subscriptions. Got to do the YouTube algorithm thing. So if you wouldn't mind dropping a like on this video, it would be greatly appreciated to the further growth of the channel. So, uh, my choice was... Emir Abad ibn Muhammad of the Abadid dynasty in the Abadid Emirate. Um, so basically, the Taifa of Seville. Sevilla. Sevilla? Sevilla. Seville. Sevilla. Yeah, that's bad. That's the worst possible way I could pronounce this. <laughs> anyway, the reason why I chose him was well, if you had watched the 1066 Iberia Guide. He was known as one of the most interesting and powerful figures in all of Muslim Iberian history, but specifically in this time period. Of course, another warlord, as so many warlords were at this time, uh, the Taifas and how they came to be after the fall of the Umayyad dynasty. And he, of course, was known for turning the skulls of slain enemies into flower pots. And I figured, hey, that's endearing. Let's go with that. <laughs> No, I mean, he's just interesting. I like the position where they're in. Uh, he's got a few smaller people right around him that they could go after pretty early on uh, to expand, start gobbling up before taking on the Dunids and the Aftazids. Having a little bit of a barrier here between us and the Christians, plus being close to the Almoravids, because that is a, an area where I'd like to expand into, be it militarily, or diplomatically, which is going to be a little hard in the beginning because they're not really fans at a minus 92. So, yeah, nobody really likes us. Nobody really likes anybody in this region. So makes for an interesting start. I also want to apologize for my voice. Uh, when this video comes out, if you're watching this the day it comes out, which is the 13th of January 2021, uh, I've been battling a really nasty cold and cough for the better part of a week and no it is not the virus that shall not be mentioned for youtube algorithm reasons um <clears throat> got a test it was negative it's just a regular old crud so if i have to do a few jump cuts here and there and you hear the music kind of oddly time out once or twice it's just because i've got a little bit of a coughing fit or a sneeze or gotta blow my nose so anyway if we take a look at emir abad ibn muhammad see we've got 1200 is the military strength 1231 so it's 1225 plus the six faris which are the knights we'll get into uh we've got a piety of 50 which is going down every month if we look at uh where it's going down here and then 750 prestige which is going up gold 69 which is going up at a 5.4 clip per month which is actually kind of nice we still have two left in our holdings of our domain limit we do have a son who obviously has claims to all of our lands. We have a du jour claim on Cadiz. So that's obviously one that we will pursue relatively early on. They're very, very weak. Um, but uh, yeah, first things first, let's go through here. We need to pick a lifestyle. He's already leaning towards Marshall. So we're going to go with Marshall and the strategy focus. And then... Um, if we look at the decisions, what we need to do here, we need to increase opinion with one of our Owalis. We will do that right away. We have too few spouses, um, which I talk about in the Guide to Marriage video. You can see that here on the video as well, or on the channel as well. So let's start off here with the Amirids. 
because that's a pretty good one to have an alliance with. Uh, she's, you know, pretty average. Nothing overly specific there or special. So we will marry her. And we will marry eh, Cadiz. I'm going to say no to that one. That should take care of that. We're going to neg negotiate an alliance with our son, of course. We could create the Duchy of Algarve, but we still need 250 gold. So, next thing is next. We will go to the military, and we will create siege weapons. Uh, I do talk about it in my military guide that just came out, part one, about armies. I do have a part two coming as well. So, obviously, I mentioned the importance of siege equipment. We definitely need that, because we will be doing a lot of sieges. We have our six for six on our knights. So, yeah, I mean, pretty average. I could recruit this guy if I had the gold, but we don't. So we'll just wait there. Then going to our council, our, uh, let's see, what could she do with us? She could help her learning. We need a boost in domain, in, in um, stewardship. It's not really our strong suit, but that's an important one to get. Now we're going to start fabricating a claim on Cordoba right away. Uh, we will do foreign affairs. We will focus on stewardship and development of our home county of Sevilla. Sevilla, Jesus. It's not that hard, realm builder guy. And we're going to uh, train our commanders, and then we're just going to disrupt schemes here. And other than that, uh, physician I'm not too worried about at this point. See, we do have that going on there. Factions. It's our son. All right, we are good here. Avenge the Battle of Tours. That's, of course, the big major decision that we will do eventually. If I click on that, you can see in 732, the Umayyad forces were defeated by the Franks on the road to Tours. Had things gone differently, all of Europe would be under Muslim rule today. I will avenge our fallen martyrs and make their dream a reality. So that gives us 750 prestige, 500 piety. Fervor increases both for uh, Mualadism blah, blah, and Catholicism. Uh, what we need to that is completely control the region of Iberia and southern Francia. So as you can see here is southern Francia. It's basically all of southern France. So what that means is obviously this is going to take a while. This is not going to be a quick, quick run. I'm going to hit unpause here now. Um, to get all of those things done. Uh, it's going to take a while. Because bit by bit, we need to build and take over Iberia. With Cadiz being the first one we will go after. So we have our alliances. And we will have to keep an eye on our neighbors. Cordoba, the Zirids, Cadiz... Uh, who have now allied. Uh, they're, they're a lot stronger now, so we just got to keep an eye on them. And then the Aftazids to the north. Um, actually. Oh. Commander promoted. My Marshal Sheikh Mohammed has been... Showing off a promising new recruit. He may not be of noble stock, as noble stock as you, my father. But on my name, I swear that Suleiman is someone you would want on your side. Very well. He shall serve me. Perfect. Let's actually take a look. Ooh. That's a very, very powerful knight, or Faris. 17 prowess, he will do well. And what this means is I can actually forbid my son from being one of our Faris. His last thing we need is uh, the player heir to die. Let's recruit him to the court as well. So now we have another good Faris. So this really helps our overall military strength. And our onagers are now complete. So we will hit pause one more time. Take a look at Cadiz. So now they are allied with the Zirids as well. Now we've got a little bit of a coalition problem here in the south. So uh, Kaltava is right here. Kalatrava. The Zirids are right here. So now they're actually quite formidable. You're looking at 2200 
soldiers on their side. If we look at us here, we are 3,200. Now, the question, of course, is whether or not our allies would come into this war, because we're not very popular. Cordoba right now, they don't really have anybody allied with them. Let's see, can we declare a war? What can we do? We can conquer the county. It would cost us 150. They're vastly inferior and have no allies. Um, what we're going to do is actually move our rally point to here. Why? Because then I don't have to cross a river to get into Cordoba. And I'm going to say that that's a good way to go. Other than that, again, we're increasing development because uh, one of the goals here is to build up our economy and uh, become powerful that way. That's very, very important part of CK3 is to make sure you have enough money to actually do all the things you want to do. So we're going to go to Cordoba. We're going to declare war. I guess I didn't need to... Um, See, Cordoba, Sueta, Almería, Galicia, Cadiz. So let's see, who who all can we can we? Let's see, we've got the Zerids. We can declare a war on them. So what instead we need to do is are the Dunids on here? No. So what we're gonna do actually is change this to let's just go there fabricate a claim there we'll, we'll start getting some claims on our neighbors and leave it as such but first things first we're going to go to Cordoba we will declare a war conquer the county we have 150 so we can definitely do that and we do not need uh, any allies for this war uh, they're without an ally, and as such, we can go in there pretty quickly. Oh, we've got a visit, so I'll ask him to stay for a while. So it'll take 20 months. Let's sway. Let's keep on swaying him. 65% chance that is successful 34% chance I only make it worse so we'll see if we can sway him it's gonna take them seven months books the poor books learning challenge we'll go with that why do we have 20 months uh, it's such a extremely fortified city all right so instead what we're gonna do here is come across here I'm just gonna break off that siege now it's time for bed all right perfect that way we're not crossing a river. He loses 10 opinion of ours, of course. All right, let's have this battle. The mismanaged population, that doesn't help. Let's get a decisive victory against them in the field. And then we have captured the enemy combatant. We'll go back and do this one more time. May need to add some siege equipment, but right now we don't have the money. Of course, we're at war, so our income is down, which doesn't help. So this 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 whole thing is going to take a little bit. So we'll just bump up the speed. All right, surety of supply. Now this is very important. Remember, if you watched my guide to the military on the army, supply is very important. No matter how formidable my soldiers are, if they run out of provisions while on campaign, they will serve me no better than trained squirrels. To this end, I should come up with a plan for ensuring my soldiers always have the supplies they need in the field. So arrange a network of merchants to help me. So gain 100 martial lifestyle. So there's a 46% chance, okay? And well-provisioned armies. Stockpile in the stronghold. That would lose 50 gold. We don't have the money. My soldiers can forage. So, accustomed to foraging. Supply duration. So, hostile county attrition minus 10%. Supply duration plus 10%. Um, now, there's a better than 50% chance we're going to get the 
Armies lacking supplies. 25% loss. Well provisioned is a plus 100 capacity. We're going to take this risk and see if it pans out. Missing supplies. Well, son of a biscuit. That, that didn't work. Uh, prisoners can be ransomed. We're not going to do that just yet. Uh, we're going to wait for this forever siege to finally get somewhere. So commander has improved. Wali Abdul Hassan increases marshal by one, which is nice. Uh, it was very important. I've changed my tactics a little bit because I've been playing, you know, you play a little bit more and more and more of CK3. You learn different strategies. You tried out different things. And training my commanders, I find to be significantly more beneficial than uh, training the troops in that sense um, or working on the levies. If I have strong commanders, then that helps in war significantly. It's kind of like investing in siege equipment or in, uh, investing in devel county development over collecting taxes. The, the collecting taxes really doesn't bring as much money as doing the development. We've got three months left here, and then this war should be done. I'm ticking down more and more and more. And we should be good here. We're at 44%. Now, the, t the war score is ticking down, of course, because we haven't really done anything aside from a battle. I've been corresponding. Oh, okay. With uh, Wali Mundir, and it has been shameful diplomatic display. Hey, you're not the man I thought. Wow. Everybody hates us. Or at least hates, hates our ruler. Okay, strategical impasse. Let's pause this, because obviously we we won the war. I'm sitting around the map table with Wali Wanago and Wali Yaya, discussing our strategy for the ongoing war. Wanako eagerly points out all of the prime targets we should immediately send raiding parties to pillage. While Yaya sits back, it patiently advocates for us to secure critical locations and wait for the enemy to come to us instead. So what are we going to do? So if we go with Wali Wanako, we get improved pillaging for 10 years. So that means siege phase time minus 10%. Supply duration plus 20%. Hostile county attrition minus 25%. Advantage minus 5. Okay. Uh, plus 20 opinion. Improved pillaging uh, for 5 years. And the other one loses 5 opinion on us. Um, okay. This one here, we get improved defenses. And that's about it. So we're definitely, or I could do nothing. My commanders can act as each see fit. Well, let's just do that. That way everybody likes us. Alright. So now, we got a lot of gold from pillaging. From looting, better said. Pillaging, looting, whatever. So now let's go to our prisoners. And we will ransom them off. Perfect. And we will enforce the demands. Gain the title, so be it. Bam. And we can disband our troops. So now we've made a lot of money. We have won the war. And expanded our territory significantly. So we have low county control. In Cordoba. So we're going to deal with that here in a second. We're going to go to our council and improve control in Cordoba. Very, very important. Recruit men at arms. All right. So now we have the money. Go to our military and we're going to recruit some men at arms beyond our onagers. So uh, we've got caballeros. So this is, of course, one. Um, that is specific to Iberia. We have camel riders, because obviously uh, that's also culturally important. So they cost 85, so they're more than light horsemen. Uh, they've got 22 damage, 16 toughness, 20 pursuit, and 50 screen. Looks like they have all the advantages and negatives that... Let's look at light horsemen real quick. Light horsemen have negatives or have disadvantages in wetlands, desert mountains, mountains, hills, advantage in drylands, and plains. Now, they're at 22, 15, 30, 30. 
Caballeros are a 22, 16, 20, 50. So they resist very nicely in the screen. And they have an advantage in the hills. So if we're going to go with a cavalry unit in future, I'm not going to do that yet. We're definitely going to go with Caballeros. We also have a lot of mountains. That's something to keep in mind. So we're going to add light footmen. A regiment of light footmen. And a regiment of bowmen as well. That's kind of where we're going to start. Then let's take a look at our holdings. City. We've got a small harbor. Guild halls. What else could we add? Farm fields. So this... So pastoral lands adds money and levies. Hunting grounds adds tax money. Defender advantage and levies. Plus... Light Cavalry Damage and Cavalry Pursuit gets benefit. Um, and it costs less than the Pastoral Land. So for me, it's a winner there. If we look at where is our ending here, Grain Silos. Supply limit is huge through that. If we go all the way to the end here, with Cattle Ranches. Supply limit, big boost. Um, and preview the Hunting Grounds at the end. It, it's significantly more military oriented. So let's see. Can we add the hunting grounds here? Jousting. I mean, these are all cost a ton of money because, again, it's a castle. Uh, Carmona holding type castle. We already have the pastures there. There we can add the hunting grounds. So I think we're going to add the hunting grounds here. And then instead, in the city, I mean, I'm not going to worry about uh, church temple holdings because that's going to be held by him or done usually by the clergy. But city, here, I think we'll either then go for farm and fields or pastoral lands to just give us a larger supply limit in the future. Okay. So we can still declare a lot of wars, but nothing at this time. But we've spent our money, I think, wisely to expand our military. We now have 1,500. We're going to be up to almost 2,000. 19, 1911, our total military strength. So we're becoming more and more powerful. The Unstoppable Alexander. While studying the tactics of ancient generals, I was astonished to learn of the exploits of Alexander the Great during his conquest of Mesopotamia. So, this could be very, very interesting. During the Siege of Tyre, Alexander assaulted an island fortress by demolishing a nearby town and then using the rubble to build a causeway stretching from the mainland to the city's walls. This allowed his siege engines to attack the enemy fortress directly, though it was his navy which ultimately created a breach. So, no amount of water will stop my armies. This will give us the trait of Forder, so cross water without advantage penalties. This is huge. So that means... If we are attacking uh, an army by a, crossing a river, they will no longer have that advantage against us. So, uh, and here is the big one. Turning foes, resources against them. Brilliant. Reaver. Reaver gives a raid speed of plus 100 and the hostile county attrition of minus 75%. So, the question is, do we want to... If we look at... Can I see here? Yeah. So as far as major river crossings, we have the Aftazits to deal with. We've already dealt with that one right there. Um, we've got a few rivers, not a ton. I think the reaver trait will be more important uh, because, again, that means the attrition we're going to deal with if we're in a hostile county. So say we are all the way up here. And I talk about attrition in my military guide to armies. Um, this is, this is really the one to do. So, so getting the reaver trait is, is huge. And I think on that note, we're going to end this first episode of the Al-Andalus Achievement Run. If you've enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new to not miss anything here on the channel. And until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and we'll talk to you soon.